This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes how to use residual income to evaluate investment centers. And investment centers, I've got a series of videos on this. Investment centers are uh, those divisions or subunits or segments that are responsible for not only profits and costs, but also for the uh, investments in long-term assets. And there are many different measures that can be used to evaluate investment centers and the managers of investment centers, and this is one of them. Residual income, as I just mentioned, is another method that can be used to evaluate manager performance for managers of investment centers. And it's the dollar amount of the division operating profit that is in excess of the division's cost of getting capital to purchase, purchase its operating asset, assets. So right here, third bullet point, is where you'll see the equation to calculate residual income. And it's simply the operating income minus the percent cost of capital, and that's um, typically calculated by most companies by looking at the cost of their debt and the cost of their equity and taking some kind of average. That's a whole different lecture, but that's where it comes from. And we multiply that percent cost of capital times the average operating assets. The goal then is, to, is for each division manager to increase residual income over time. So let's take a look at an example of, of how to calculate residual income on the next slide. I've been using this same company for all of the examples of how to evaluate an investment center. Um, so you'll see the exact same uh, dollar amounts and same numbers. They all tie together. Uh, the company is called Game Products Incorporated. And this company has three different divisions. We've got the sporting goods division that you'll see right here. We've got the board games division and the computer games division. And what we're going to do here is to calculate the residual income for each of these divisions. And as I mentioned, I have a video on how to find the operating profit margin uh, ratio and evaluating the divisions just using that. I've got a video on how to use return on investment to evaluate each of these divisions. So you can take a look at that as well. And now we're looking at how to find the residual income for each division. And again, the residual income formula is right up here. You'll see it here. It's the operating income minus the percent cost of capital times the average operating assets. So we're going to assume here that the percent cost of capital for all three divisions is 8%. The operating income numbers are shown here. So we'll just take a look at the sporting goods division, and then you can look at the other divisions separately if you like to see how those calculations are done. But we'll, we'll focus on the sporting goods division here. Residual income then is the operating income, that's this three uh, these are in thousands, $3,295,000, um, minus the 8% times the average operating assets. And I have a separate video that talks about, I, I believe it's the return on investment video, that talks about where we get the average operating assets. So I'm not going to focus too much on that here. But these are the, the, the operating assets that are uh, used for the daily operations of the business of this particular division. So the average operating assets for the sporting goods division is $29,350,000. So we multiply that by 8% and uh, that gives us $2,348,000. We subtract that from the operating income and that means we have residual income or income left over of $947,000. So that's how we find the residual income for the sporting goods division. We then run the same calculation for the other two divisions and you'll see that the board games division has a residual income of $516,000. These are all in thousands. And that the computer games division actually has a loss of 400, a residual income that's negative of $419,000. There are some limitations to using residual income. And the first is that it's stated in dollars rather than as a ratio. So it's, it's pretty tough to, to com compare divisions because, again, you've got to factor in uh, things like the dollar amount of assets in place that is needed to create the residual income that we have. And so that gets a little bit complicated trying to compare divisions across the board. One division may have high residual income simply because it has a larger asset base. So it's that whole idea of making sure we include assets in the equation. And um, return on investment is an excellent way to do that. That's, again, a separate video. So division managers, if we're going to use residual income, should be evaluated based on how effectively... Uh, they increase, hopefully increase, residual income from one period to the next. And that's typically how it's used, to take a look at how a particular manager is doing with a division over time by looking at residual income over time. 